While I have the cowl off, I thought I might try to fix a problem that's been bothering me for the past few months. My mixture cable has a little bit of slack in it. It's a vernier cable, and so that means that sometimes their vernier doesn't quite work, and you can sit there and twist it, and it doesn't do anything. Let me show you. So here's my throttle and mixture cables. They're both vernier cables, the exact same spec. The way this works is there's a little uh, spiral cut on the inside, and so you can twist this to do fine adjustments. And to do coarse adjustments, you press this button which releases the little ball bearing that sits in the spiral, and you can do coarse adjustments. But when I installed this, my cable does a full 360 degrees around, and the type of cable that I got, I guess, has a little bit of play if you bend it that much. So you can kind of see here, if I move it this much, it doesn't actually move the throttle or the mixture back at the engine. You can imagine that makes it pretty difficult to fine set mixture or throttle. So what I was thinking is maybe I could install some kind of a spring in order to keep the slack out, but not enough to like move the control itself. So let's give it a shot. This is the other side of that cable that we were just playing with. This is the mixture side of the fuel servo. You can kind of see here, there's a little bit of play. The, this should not be moving, it should be stiff. And so my idea was if I installed a spring here that either pulls or pushes, it could just push just enough to keep the slack out of it, but not enough to like continuously push, you know, the mixture. This direction is rich. This direction is lean. Now in aviation, you typically want your uh, control cables to fail to a, a good position. If you think about the mixture cable, you probably want it to fail to full rich instead of full lean. That would kill the engine. So I guess for this situation, I want to push or pull in this direction for the mixture cable. So. I think what we'll try to do is get my pull scale out and I'll see how much force is required just to kind of take up that slack a little bit and then I'll order some springs or find some springs that might work. Dang, did you guys hear that? It was about a two pound pull, I think, that started to move it. I think all I need is a little bit of force there in order to hold, hold the slack away. So let me jump on McMaster car and see if I can find a, both a compression spring and a pull spring that might work for this application. Cool. Yeah, maybe something here will work. So it's maybe a, uh, a washer on the back side of this nut to capture this end of the spring and then the spring could probably sit up against this as long as there's enough inner dimension to clear this uh, little grommet uh, pushing. Man, I don't know, that's pretty stiff. I guess we'll find out. Let me uh, disassemble the front end of this and see about making a washer. Am I safe in this hangar? I'm not sure. It is on the seventh thread from the end. It's good to remember because it, it takes a minute to adjust that. To have full control authority, I need to cut the spring to length. So I guess it should be about this long.
first try it seems to work. Uh, let me get everything tightened back up and check the footage and see if there's any lashing. I can't feel any lashing anymore on the knob, so that's a good sign. It is a little bit stiff when I pull the mixture all the way out. So I might uh, look and see if I can find the uh, softer spring, but this I'm, I think this will work for now. I think that's going to work. Let me just put some torque seal on it and wrap it up and call it quits before this crazy rain cell comes in. Can you see that? No, that's nuts. See you guys.